everyone. Welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Today we're going to be talking about a pretty hot topic, and it's talking about stubbing up the rebar for our UFER ground. Is it legal? Can we do it? And what are we even talking about? So traditionally on a footing, the concrete people will come in and they will tie off their steel. We will come in with a fitting like this. And it's rated for rebar. It is also rated for direct burial and for concrete. And then we'll attach our number four to that like so. And we'll have to leave a curl of wire laying out on the job site. Now, this is at the very beginning of construction. They're working on the initial foundation. So we have this large roll, usually 20 feet or so, hanging out on the job site for months and months at a time. Well, as you can imagine, with the rising prices of copper and everything going on in the world, it's not really safe or advisable to leave 20 foot of copper just laying out on a job site. Just like back during the recession or other times when copper's high, people walk up, they snip it, and it walks away. And then we're stuck with not only losing you know, fortune with the copper nowadays, we do not have a way to attach to our original grounding electrode system. So is there a way around this? What can we do? Let's talk about it. So let's take a look at how this looks out in the field. So this, let's imagine that this is our footing. There's a couple different ways that you may see this done. So one of them is to take a piece of that rebar and stub it outside of the structure. You're going to end up with a finished product that looks like this. So we take this piece of rebar, we've stubbed it out of the structure. Later, the electricians have came and they've installed their number four conductor. Now, whether or not this acorn clamp is rated for what they're using this picture for, you would have to check the specs to see if it's rated for it. But that's one way to do it. The second way to do it is with this piece right here, and that's to physically stub it up inside of a wall. Now, at that time, those walls are not framed, so you have to stub it up. Now, unfortunately, there was a horror story of one of the, uh, you know, our electricians here where the carpenters had come in and cut all of those off. So you have to really work with your general contractor or whoever's building the home to tell those carpenters that they've got to drill around that stud plate and put it in. It's only one time, so it's not a big hassle for them. And they're having to do their, you know, um, what are they, the bolt plates on the bottom anyway. So it's just one more hole that they have to drill. It's not that big a deal. But you got to make sure they don't cut that off because then you're stuck in the same boat. But what they've done here, this is your stud. They've stubbed this up through the ground. And then later, they are physically making this connection right here. And they are extending that over to their service, wherever that or wherever they're doing their grounding electrode you know, system. Or if they're using a different conductor to get back to the grounding electrode system. But the magic question is, is it legal? Let's talk about it. So is it legal? In my opinion and in our area, yes, but there's some things that we need to talk about here because some inspectors may not allow you to do this, and I understand why. It's going to be all in how you interpret what's going on here. So let me break down the two camps. I'll let you decide, and then we'll talk about some things that if you do do it that you have to watch out for. All right, things that we need to watch out for. Is this stub up? the stub up of the rebar, an extension of the grounding electrode conductor or of the grounding electrode. I have heard both sides and depending on how you answer that question is going to be depending on whether or not your electrical inspector allows you to do it. So what we're talking about here is these two pieces right here. Let me get my pointer out. This piece and this piece. Are these technically an extension of the you know, grounding electrode itself? Remember, this is the electrode in this case. Is this the extension of the electrode or is this an extension of the grounding electrode conductor so let's talk about it grounding electrode extension all right so this is what we're talking about and we're talking about this right here so if this is an extension of the grounding electrode this is the original connection and we're going to talk about some things that you need to make sure you do if your inspector lets you guys do this in your area you guys can drop it in the comments below so if this is an extension of the grounding electrode itself, this would be my first and original connection. And this is going to need to be accessible with like we're getting ready to learn about. But I've heard it said that this is this rebar, this piece stubbing out is an extension of the grounding electrode conductor, meaning that this is where the electrode ends. This is where the conductor starts and legally, in my opinion, you would not be able to make this connection right here and extend over to the service. And let me explain what I'm talking about. So if your inspector deems that this is part of the grounding electrode, okay, uh, electrode conductor, 
when you stub this piece up, this connection point right here would actually have to be performed with one of the methods in 250.8, whether it's CAD welding, a termination bar, irreversible crimp. Because remember, if we ever want to extend the grounding electrode conductor itself, it has to be done with one of those methods. We always crimp it, don't we? It has to be an irreversible means or terminate to a termination bar. So the magic question is for your inspector, is this a grounding electrode extension or is this a grounding electrode conductor extension? Because if it is a grounding electrode conductor extension, this connection right here, in my opinion, is not going to be legal. So you guys can let us know what your inspectors think and why they think that down in the comments below. All right, let's imagine that your inspector says, yes, you can do this. There's some things that we need to watch out for. So this connection point must be accessible. I may have misspoke earlier in the video and said the words readily accessible, but it's only required to be accessible, which means that you can get to it somewhere in the system. So if this were your case and you stubbed up this piece right here and you made this connection and then headed over to your service, one way to make this connection accessible is with something like this. So you could take a plaster ring, you literally would screw it to the wall with two fasteners, and put a single gang blank on it. That's one way to do it. You could, there's multiple ways that you could do it, but this is probably the most practical and easy way to do it. So if your inspector says, yes, you can do something like this, you have to make that connection point accessible. And as long as that connection point is accessible, you're good to go. You can make it accessible by using something like a plaster ring, literally screwing it to this two by four and putting on a blank faceplate after construction, and then you would technically be able to access that point. You also could use a two-gang um, one of these and a two-gang blank faceplate if you felt like you needed to have a little bit more room, but legally it only has to be accessible at all. So I hope this didn't stir up more than it clarified, okay? I hope this did make some clarification for you. Your inspector is going to be in one camp or the other. If he is in the one camp, follow all the other electrical codes and connection methods and means. Work with your electrical inspector hand in hand. Make sure it's accessible at some point in the system. And also make sure you set it up to be accessible on the rough end. And if I'm an inspector looking at this, I'm going to want to make sure this is accessible on the rough end. Not, oh, we'll remember it's there later type stuff. With that being said, I hope you guys have a great week. I'm super proud of so many of you guys are getting your license. You're working on your license. You're grinding. If there's anything that I can ever do to help you in life or business, I just want to see you win. You can email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.